it's Lucy and today I'm here to do a video showcasing the bookstores that I visited on my last trip to New York City. If you've been watching my channel for a while then you'll know that I am actually from New York City and I currently live in Atlanta but I still visit New York City a couple times a year barring that horrible terrible year that nobody talks about just to see my family and just visit. Because I'm from New York City I have been to some of these bookstores before already but some of these were actually new to me here i am a talking head to guide you through and everything and show you the things that i actually got while i was there we're starting off in the two bookstores i went to in brooklyn which actually were really random i hadn't fully intended on going to those bookstores in Brooklyn. So my boyfriend who came on this trip with me found this bookstore, Quimby's Bookstore NYC. And he was like, you're gonna love this bookstore. I was like, why do you think that? And it turns out that it features one of my favorite features of a bookstore, a bookstore cat. Her name is Gracie. She has a box that she sleeps in and I love her. So like I said, Quimby's Bookstore NYC was a random stop for me. I had never heard of it before this trip, but I really liked it. I think it's a really cute store. They seem to specialize in mostly like zines and like very, very small presses. I did end up getting one thing, a zine, and it was obviously to fit the theme. It came in this little black slip cover thing. I don't know what you call that. Piece of paper. And this zine was called Cat Party number six. There are at least nine issues in this zine series. I don't know what you call it. They are all edited or written by Katie Heigl. And the subtitle is At Home With Our Cats. And this one seems to be like an anthology where like Katie had other people write little stories or essays and comics about cats. This just seems to be Katie's thing, which I love, okay? I have yet to look up Katie Heigl, but we seem to be kindred spirits. This also seems to be published by Microcosm, which I would guess is a small press in Portland. I'll just read you the back. It says, what's that? You say that you can't get enough cats? Fortunately, Katie Heigl has got your fix, and she's exceptionally skilled at getting friends and strangers alike to tell her their sentimental feline tales. This time around, she uncovered a lovely range of emotional narratives, from poignant tales of missing a cat to fun stories about finding one's perfect kitty soulmate. Is it a surprise that I would get a zine like this? Yeah, if you're ever in New York City, specifically Brooklyn, specifically the Williamsburg area, I would recommend Quimby's Bookstore. Now we're on to the bookstores I visited in Manhattan. The first one I want to talk about is Barnes & Noble, specifically the Barnes & Noble in Union Square. I try to visit that Barnes & Noble every time I'm in New York City just because I have a lot of fond memories of going there when I was in high school along with the Strand. I love Union Square. That's a side tangent I guess in case you wanted my opinion. And this Barnes & Noble is especially special because it is apparently the largest Barnes & Noble in the United States. It clocks in at being four stories tall. There is an escalator, there's a cafe, which I feel like most Barnes & Nobles have nowadays but it's a bigger cafe. They just have a lot of books. I really enjoy being in there. I ended up not buying anything in there, but I always have a good time browsing and seeing the fun displays that all the employees seem to come up with. Next we have The Strand, which I actually did spend a decent amount of time in there. I just forgot to take any video clips, which is my bad, so I only have this one clip. But this is a New York staple. If this is not your first New York City Bookstores video you're watching, you've definitely, definitely, definitely seen it. If you watch any booktuber that is based in New York City, you've definitely seen it. <laughs> like, everyone likes it, and I'm no exception. It's a fun bookstore. They're most notable for their tagline, 18 miles of books, which actually, I don't really know what that means. I used to think it meant 
that inside the store, if you like walk through all the shelves and everything, then it would be 18 miles. But maybe it means that if you laid out all the books they had end to end, it would make up 18 miles. I don't really know. I don't, I, I tried to look this up also. I couldn't find a definition. Maybe I was bad at Googling, but that's their tagline. It's on all their stuff. It's also famous because it's also one of the oldest independent bookstores in New York City. It was one of the bookstores that was on the famed book row, which was a an area of Manhattan that had a lot of bookstores in it between, I think it said like the late 1800s to, the 1960s and then because raising rents all the bookstores either disbanded or had to move according to a lot of news articles they say that the strand is the last remaining one but i know that's not true because of the bookstore we're going to talk about next so i'm not sure if that means because the strand is still in the same area where book row was so maybe that's what they mean even though the strand according to wikipedia had to move to a different location because of the raising rents but they i guess moved in the same area so i don't know the point of this being, I did end up buying one book and here's the bookmark that they give you every time you go. I think this actually looks different. They do have a few locations. The one I went to is their most famous location, also the biggest one. That would be 828 in Broadway, in case you're in New York City. Every book gets a bookmark and I got Found Your Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. I did forget to mention The Strand is both a new and used bookstore. So this book obviously used, it looks a little more beat up because my boyfriend took it home for me and I think it got a little beat up in a suitcase, <laughs> but it's fine. It's still readable and it was only $10. We follow a main character who's a thief and she goes on a heist to, unbeknownst to her, steal an artifact of unimaginable power. This magical artifact allows people to use coded commands to imbue everyday objects with sentience, which sounds like a lot of power. And since our main character, whose name is Sancia, has it, a bunch of people want her dead and so she kind of goes on the run. <laughs> and she has to find allies and figure out a way to survive. The Strand has both new and used books and they're all together, like they don't separate, like, oh, this is the used book section, this is the new book section, really. Often what I used to do, and if you're in The Strand, you should do it too. If you see multiple books together, you should actually look at the prices because it will change depending on what condition the book is. And sometimes the condition is like barely noticeable the difference between it, but it'll be like multiple dollars cheaper. So always keep that out. I always check every edition of every copy of the book they have that I'm looking at in the strand. Okay, so the next bookstore that I teased is our Gosi bookstore. Like I said, this bookstore was also on book row and it is known as the oldest independent bookstore in New York City, having opened in 1925. Like I said, it did move from book row. I forgot what year and I didn't write it down, might be. This bookstore specializes in out of print and rare books and I just thought it was a really cool place to be. I feel like if you were a kid, imagining what it was like to work in a bookstore like with all the imagination that little kids have like this bookstore would be exactly it like you have all the old books all the like interesting copies like leather bound copies and then all of the employees or not all but there were a bunch of employee desks in the middle of the floor basically and like that's where they're working from and all their desks were covered in like old rare copies of books and papers and things like that and it just I thought it looked really cool. <laughs> like that was like my dream when I was a little kid. This bookstore is also pretty large. Apparently it takes up six floors. They have like a gallery of like prints from old books and things. And then they just have rare copies and other stuff going on in the other floors. I did not know how to get to those other floors. It seemed like you had to ask someone and I'm a shy person and I was alone at this point. So I didn't, I didn't want to ask. So you are only getting footage from the first floor but it was pretty packed in there.
So I feel like that was enough footage. I didn't get anything because nothing just fully piqued my interest really, but there were some interesting books in there. And they do sell like prints from books, just like old like copies of books. Like they just tear out some pages or not tear out pages, but you know, some of the pages falling out and stuff and they sell those, which I thought was really cool. I did look through some of them, but I didn't find anything that was like really super intriguing to me. Also this bookstore has lasted this long, so I don't think it's going anywhere. I can always go back and see if anything new piques my fancy. And the final bookstore that I went to is McNally Jackson. This is also a sort of chain. I believe they have five or six locations and I had only been to their Soho location before, but this time around I had read that last summer they opened a new location in Rockefeller Center that they were intending to be their flagship store, which means it's the biggest of their stores. Allegedly, I read that somewhere. <laughs> I really liked it. It's been a while since I went to that Soho location, so I don't really remember how big that was, but it was pretty big. There's two floors here and they have like a really nice stationary section. <laughs> which I enjoyed thoroughly, which you'll see when I show you the books I got from there. And I also think it would be fun to like go again around Christmas time. That's when Rockefeller Center is really popping in my opinion because that's when the big Christmas tree is there because that's Christmas time. And yeah, I love Rockefeller Center. I know that's very unpopular opinion to like any touristy place as a New Yorker, but I love the touristy places. I don't know. We can talk about that another day. got says McNally Jackson the back says goods for the study also on the side it does say their locations there's six other locations actually damn this store is expanding a lot more than I thought so I got two book books this is how you lose a time war by Amal L. Motar and Max Gladstone. I'm sure, sure, sure you have heard of this. If not from booktube, this book also had a recent resurgence, which I guess finally prompted me to buy it, I guess. Also, I just really wanted to buy things. But yeah, if you haven't heard the, about the resurgence, Google Bigalus Dickalus. This is about two time traveling agents on so opposite sides of some kind of like global war that I'm not too familiar with who leave notes for each other and through those notes fall in love. Yeah, and it's a queer love story, so I'm told. The other reading book I got at McDowney Jackson is Several People Are Typing by Calvin Kasuki. And I've heard really mixed things about it, but just the premise of it sounded really interesting to me. We follow a guy who works at a publishing house, not a publishing house, a PR firm might be. During, I think it's implied to be COVID, I'm not sure if it says it really, but it says everyone's working from home basically, and our main character's consciousness gets uploaded to their Slack workspace. And it just sounds really interesting. And it's told in like typed messages over Slack and everything because their main character lives in Slack, which I feel like is wild. And I, I just love the idea of that. But the reviews on this, I feel like are pretty mixed, but I just couldn't let it go. So next I got this notebook. It's covered in plastic. Now it's open and not covered in plastic. You're welcome. It says no to self and it is made by Wit and Delight. I've never heard of this notebook manufacturer, but it's a nice cover. It has this like soft linen cover. The end pages are golden, sprayed golden, which love that. Always love a sprayed edge. And the pages, which is the reason I bought this, they just, I feel like they just look really interesting. I don't really see a lot of like professional notebooks or not professional, but just like fancy stationary brands use pages like this. And I just thought it was interesting. And so I wanted it. It also has a pocket in the back, which is nice. And yeah, those are the only features I think. I just like the way the notebook looked and I once again was in the mood to buy things. And the last thing that I bought from McNally Jackson are these stickers, which are described as pre-cut washi tape, which I don't, okay, I guess it's like pre-cut, but is it, is it? I don't know. I thought they were page flags. I looked up this brand and they're 
described as pre-cut washi. I just thought they were cute. I liked all the kit of things. They were really expensive though. This was seven bucks. So yes, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you might like my last haul video where I talked about the bookstores I visited last year all over the country. So that will be linked over here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!